and welcome everybody back to another edition of the Crochet Crowd and of course with my friends at allfreecrochet.com. I'm emailed on a daily level, Mikey, how do you read patterns? How do you actually do it? How do you work your way through it? So on behalf of my friends at Bernat.com, we're going to work through one of their baby blankets. We're going to show you how to read the pattern, links on getting more information if you're stuck in a pattern, and some tips along the way. This baby's blanket, though it appears complicated in a pattern, is actually extremely simple. So let's get working on this pattern and show you what it's all about. Now finding patterns online is actually pretty simple. We're going to go to Bernat.com today and we are going to look into the patterns. Now if you log in, which is free, you can actually see their entire free library. And it's a great way to be able to look how to operate their product but actually learn how to do stuff along the way. So let's uh, get busy and we're going to click the new patterns for this particular idea. And we're going to look to the third one over. It's the green the yellow and the white baby's blanket. And now let's just stop here and see what we're looking at here on this screen. So the first thing you need to do is determine what is your skill level. And you can see that usually by some bars that seem to be an industry standard. And the baby's blanket is considered easy, but there's actually two bars filled in. So it's one step up from beginners. So if you understand a little bit about crochet, you're probably going to be able to do this and be able to simply do it. So let's uh, click on that pattern and see where we go. So we're now on the dedicated page of the baby blanket and we can see a lot of information here. On the left hand side you can still see if you didn't like this pattern you can choose other stuff that's on the left. And we're looking at more specific information now about this baby's blanket. And you can actually download this pattern so it's more of a printer friendly idea for your to save ink and etc. And ENG is short for English, F-R-A-N is short for French. So you can take a look and let's just move our eyes down a little bit further and I'll show you some tricks. So before we start diving into the pattern you'll notice on the top it says abbreviations and you will see a website. So why don't we click that and see where that goes. If at any point in the Bernat pattern that you're confused this particular link will show you and actually describe to you what they're asking for. An extremely helpful link in order to be successful. So now we've clicked it, we see a crochet and knitting abbreviations at the top. You can just click either or. And what you should be aware of is that Canadian and U.S. terminology in crochet is not always the same. Just like my Australian friends, my European friends, we all have a little bit of a difference. And so this gives you an indication of what you're reading so that you can understand um, the patterns and what they're asking for. So let's uh, click the crochet abbreviations and see where that goes. So we're still here on the glossary of the crochet abbreviations. Again, very, very simple. BEG is short for beginning. CH is an industry standard for chaining. Anything you need to know is down here. You just got to scroll and you will see that there's two columns. So PAT on the top is short for pattern and it looks like it's actually alphabetical. So it's a really great resource in order to be successful. So let's uh, get heading back to the pattern and let's dive right into it. Okay, so we're back on the pattern. I want you to go to download pattern and click either English or French. In this case, we're going to do an English version. So click that. We're going to go to more paper printer friendly version of looking at this pattern. So that's where I'm going next. So here I am, a pattern picture is at the top and then the list of directions. I've zoomed out so you can see the entire page. And basically what I would do, ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to print this out, maybe get a highlighter or a pen that you can actually work your way through. It just makes it very simple when you can highlight the steps that you've gone through so that you're not ever lost in this particular pattern. So let's zoom in on the top and begin to read. So looking into this pattern, we're going to talk in American terms today. We have a blanket and it says its measurement is going to be 36 inches square. It's telling you that you're going to need, need seven balls of material and it's telling you it's the Bernat baby blanket material. It gives you the yarn information telling you what even the code of the yarn is. So you got baby green, white, baby yellow. 
and we're looking at the crochet hook size. So in Americans, you like letters, so it's going to be a size N, and or in Canadian terms, it's a 10 millimeter hook. Okay, so that's what you need to obtain the gauge. Of course, if you're confused on the abbreviations, it has that helpful link. And the gauge is six double crochet and four rows equals four inches for a swatch and it's telling you a final note that chaining of three counts as one double crochet. That confuses many people. If I could just steer your eyes back to the material, you're going to notice that there's a letter in front of every color. So A is baby green, B is white, C is baby yellow. So when we go look further down to instructions, it says with A or with B or with C, it's referring to the colors that you see in the materials list. It's asking you now with color A, so with the instructions, color A, chain four, and then once you've done that, join it with the slip stitch at the start of the chain to cause like a ring. This is how you do the top of hats, granny squares, all of that jazz. So let's move along to the first round, and now it's saying to chain one. Okay, so chain one. And so everything in the brackets after it, it says four times in the ring. So what we're gonna do is one single crochet, chaining of three, and do that four times in the ring, and that'll cause your work to go all the way around the ring, and then it says to slip stitch with the very first single crochet that you put into the actual ring. So the second round, we have not changed color, so that's why you don't see an A, B, or C at the front. And now let's fumble our way through this and we'll get through it good. So it says to slip stitch in the next chaining three space. So you just wanna cause a slip stitch, then chain three. Okay, so now here's where we have the brackets again. So it says to two double crochet, chain three, and three double crochet, into the same space as the last slip stitch. And that was the last one that you just put into the line. So the very next part, we're looking at an asterisk and it's three double crochet, uh, chaining of three, three double crochet into the next chaining of three space. Now the chaining of three space is the line underneath it. Okay, so you're putting three double crochet, three chain, and three double crochet into that exact same space on the square. Okay, so now what it's asking you to do is to repeat from the asterisk, which is inside the brackets, two more times as you work your way around. And then at the very end, you want to join with the slip stitch at the top of the chaining of three that you started with when you first started this round. And then fasten off, so you want to weave that off, and we're going to change colors for the third round. Moving right along down to the third round and it says join B. That means color with a slip stitch to any corner of the chain three space. So all corners have chain three. So just pick one that you're happy with and go for it. Once you attach it, you're gonna chain one and now it's asking you to one single crochet, chain three, one single crochet into the same space. So the same space where you've done the corner and now we're back at the asterisk again and that usually means that there's going to be a repeat. So it says chain three and then mix the, miss the next two double crochets that's on the line below and then one single crochet between the next two double crochets. Okay, so you're looking at the line below in order to figure that out and then chaining of three. Now we have some double asterisks and it has in the brackets one single crochet, chain three, one single crochet into the next corner and the corner is the chain three space. That's what it's telling you. So now it's telling you to repeat from the one asterisk. So move your eyes back up to where you saw the one asterisk of so the chain three, miss the next two double crochet, one single crochet, next two double crochet, chaining of three. So you wanna repeat all of that. And then it says to repeat the double asterisk and you want to do that once more. And basically what you're doing is doing a repeat of exactly. So instead of just continually typing over and over and over those directions, it's using asterisks to kind of get you to look back up and see what's been written. 
Moving right along to the fourth round, we're not changing any colors. We're just going to slip stitch into the next chaining. So we're just going to move ourselves over by doing a slip stitch and now you're going to chain three. So chaining three, if you remember, equals one double crochet as per the abbreviations on the other side. So now in the brackets, it says to two double crochet chain three and then three double crochet into the same spot. So if you think the corner is not equal, it actually is because the chaining of three equals one double crochet. So technically you have three double crochet, three chain and three double crochet. We now have asterisks and basically we're working what I call along the runway. So it's the space in between the corners and that's why it says twice after this. So if you're thinking it's kind of weird, it's not. So it's asking you to three double crochet into the next chaining of three space and that's the one under underneath and basically it's asking you to do that twice because there's two gaps underneath. Now we're back at the corner and again it's the, th I call it the triple three everybody. So it's three double crochet, chaining a three, three double crochet into the next corner. You want to do that with every corner. So that actually makes it very simple when you look at that. And then you're back along the runway, the space in between. So look back up to the one asterisk and you're going to do that three double crochet into the next chaining a three space and do it twice as you work your way along. So that's very, very simple and once you keep repeating what you're seeing here all the way around, you just want to fasten off because now on the fifth round, we're going to join with the color C. Now this is no ordinary uh, granny square blanket. One rotation, basically you're creating the foundation and the second rotation, you're actually creating all the bulk inside this blanket. So now when you're looking at the fifth round, it says join with the color C and basically this is creating the foundation. Okay, so then the next sixth round is the actual doing the bulk. So it just says to a uh, slip stitch to any of the corners. So just pick one and then chain one and then one single crochet into the next chaining of three space and then one single in, uh, crochet again into the same space. And now you have your asterisks again. And basically, you, basically what we just done before is that you just want to follow that along as you work your way around. And this actually round is a lot more simpler because it's uh, just a lot of gapping in order to create the foundation uh, for round number six. Now round number six, we are using uh, the color C. We just want to slip stitch into the corner. You want to do your chaining a three again. And basically it's two double crochet, chaining a three, three double crochet into the same spot. So you're creating the corner and now you want to work your way along the runway. So the pieces in between the corners, three double crochet into the next chaining of three space. And you want to do that all the way to the next corner. And then you're going to do your, um, uh, three double crochet, you're going to do your uh, three chain and then three double crochet again. So basically what you've done on the one runway is going to be repeated all the way around and you're going to slip stitch at the end. And so then we're going to move along and rejoin color number B for round number seven. In round number seven, we're join B again and we're going to slip stitch it to any corner. We're going to do a chain one and then one single crochet, a three chain and one single crochet into the same spot. So basically what you did in round number four or five is being repeated here in round number seven. It's just that there's more gapping in between the corners because your square has gotten bigger. So you just got to follow along and just repeat. So what you've done on one runway to the one corner will be done on the next side and then the next side side and the next side until you get all the way around where you'll slip stitch again and basically start on round number now moving along to round number eight, we are now going to be doing what you did in round number six. So every other line is actually identical to each other. The only difference is, is that you're changing colors. So uh, you just got to pay attention to the color change, but everything is identical. Again, chaining, slip stitch into the chain of four, uh, three space, which is the corner, and then do your uh, two double crochet, chain three, three double crochet into the same spot, and then work your way along the runway, and then get to your corner, do your triple three, so your uh, three double crochet, three chain, three double crochet, 
and then work your way in the runway again. And so that's how you do this blanket. You just gotta keep following along and just carefully read the directions as you're working as you're working away. Grab the highlighter and you'll be successful every time. Until next time everybody, thank you so much for joining us and we wish you a really great day.